Welcome to Rauda, and this time rather different opinion video. Not so much opinion video in a way, I'll explain soon, but rather one of those contemplations, not exactly ranting one because this is actually a very positive one. But to give you a little bit of pointers, uh, when talking about cer certain experiences lived through by yours truly, it's kind of hard to figure out them as opinions. Hence, this is something of a miscellaneous thoughts related to personal life, but also something that I think could work as a pointer in universal sense. So here I am talking about the comeback of my own band when it comes to live appearances. Now, those of you who have been following the channel for quite some time are aware of my own band history, which goes all the way to early 90s. 1994 was the very first year when I started a first band with my band friends back then. Back those days, it was death metal, and we didn't really record anything. Not that I can recall. So it was 1996 when I saw, joined Nightside, my very worst real band, if you will. The style was actually Nordic black metal. Melodic, fast tempo, and kind of a very typical for the time being. So me, quite experienced as a vocalist, didn't have so much as a clue, like where to go and, you know, go with the band doing lyrics and all that stuff. Now, obviously, as a young person back in the days, early 20s, um, you know, those lyrics just were kind of, a, I guess, kind of a typical for the time. And it wasn't just me doing those, but we were just pretty much just, you know, doing the stuff and, you know, figuring out on the way we were progressing with the band. Soon we entered the studio for a demo. A couple of years later, with lineup changes and all that stuff, we did our first album and all that stuff. Now, this is something that I guess, in a way, recapped already with my previous Nights at Video, but just give you a little bit of a background information. Now, this uh, moment of happiness, if you can call it that, didn't last for too many years. Too many lineup changes, too many uh, staggering parts along the way. So it was roughly around 2001 or so when I left the band to focus on my other band, Annihilators, which was founded in 1999. And um, even though even that one went on a hiatus for a long time, that came, uh, came back a little bit earlier than Nightside. Whereas Annihilate has had like some 13 years of a hiatus or break, if you will. it. Um, Nightside for me had almost like, well, kind of like 20 years. And um, that's where it gets kind of interesting. Because after such a long break, I mean, persons, people usually change quite a lot over the years. I mean... Whatever you do in your 20s, it's quite a different when you're in your 40s and all that stuff. But there we had it. There was already talks about Knights are doing certain kind of a comeback kick a few years earlier than what it actually happened early 2022. But nothing really happened back then. I, I don't know if there was actually a proper lineup even set up during those days. So things were not really moving or actually becoming something of a reality. But come 2022, we have those uh, first LPs of the End of Christianity CD, which was the first and so far the only album by Nightside released all, more than 20 years ago. And uh, those LP versions to Goldworx actually looked fantastic. And, uh, well, the music felt kind of a timeless. The label dude said that he just loved the music and wanted to do a repress for that because there was no vinyl version of it, like, ever. Not even tape. Those are still in the works. But the vinyl version came in late 2020, and we got our copies early 2021. So, start spreading to the um, old members of the band, and suddenly things got going. Maybe we would actually play these songs. Listening to those songs before the vinyl went into pressing, felt like, man, these songs sound kind of timeless. Even to our ears. Obviously, when you have enough time to uh, kind of uh, value and analyze your own music, not that I was so much present in the songwriting, you know, guitarists and all that stuff, me being the vocalist and focusing on lyrics and all that stuff, um, but still, you kind of uh, distance from your, yourself from your music. And that's where it gets interesting, because sometimes you start feeling like, hey, this is actually something that we could work on. That is, we've got proper lineup. So suddenly there was this original member, the drummer, the main songwriter, me, and one of the older guitarists. But we were lacking some key members. Some of them are not interested in black metal anymore. They have their own bands, or they have moved away 
from the city. So we start planning come fall 2021 and we're like, okay, we could really do this if we get a couple of more members. So then we start messaging, calling, whatever, talking. And suddenly, I think this was already <clears throat> in the end of uh, the summer. We have this cool dude, my good friend uh, in powerlifting and music, uh, who get to, you know, interest uh, in, in playing the bass for Night Side, having previously his own bands. So he was a good choice, you know. You know, I think he's one of those guys where you just know where the chemistry works, everything clicks. So if you could really just, you know, handle the songs and, you know, fit the rest of the guys, why the hell not? Then we have this other guy who my drummer already had previous contact in other bands. I know this also this guy, this guitar player, and we're like, hey, he would be a cool dude. He knows uh, how to play the guitar properly. Uh, he already plays his style much like the bass player, just in different bands. And we start rehearsing in fall 2022 and uh, so, sorry 2021 obviously and uh, we have this rehearsal place people get to know each other suddenly we start playing those old songs and things start to feel good i mean it feels good in a way that yes we're definitely tr doing this so then we got our first uh, gig offer like hey guys you should really do this comeback uh, gig in your own city by the promoter who actually likes the music who was like yes you should do this comeback and you should play at our event which then again would be Turku Satanalle 9 or IX so we start you know doing and rehearsing more and more and more and things feel better like by every time we enter the rehearsal place people start to know each other you know the songs start to feel really good vocals start steeping into my brain so I have to read all them all over again you know and you know it gets more powerful you feel like there is something properly happening not just some old farts doing the comeback gig for the sake of it and just then you know vanishing all again so roughly about six months and we're ready to enter the stage now I'm not the person who gets nervous like basically never yeah there have been some parts during in my life but the older i get the less i have those nervous moments you know the kind of butterflies in your tummy kind of a thing but even uh, we have a couple of years and i go even to sauna with my friends before the gig after the sound check you still kind of get this a little bit nervous feeling but suddenly we kind of feel we have our stage attire and you will see that on the video if you want to i will just link it here um you know, you get the feeling like this could be really it. This could be the moment that defines Nights at 2.0, if you will, with the new lineup, but with those old songs and with more focus on what's really going on. We're not the guys in our 20s anymore. We're a little bit older and we know what we want. We know that we're not going to fuck it up. We know we're going to play a proper show and I guess in a way give people full Nightside treatment. So on the stage we go and I think the nervousness is kind of gone after half a song or so and I feel like we're owning it. I'm not saying we're like the best show on the evening. We're very much too biased for that and I guess some of those bands are way too experienced for us to even get in comparison for that. But the point here is uh, I think we're doing it appropriately and even when I saw those photos of the show later on and a little bit of that footage I couldn't, you know, actually watch it for, for really, not because I was embarrassed, but I mean, <laughs> I don't really have that curiosity to watch myself from the kind of a third perspective, like, hey, there it is. That's for other people to enjoy or judge, whatever it is. The point here, the whole deal I'm actually making this video is to say, sometimes you really need to go to the full circle only to come back and figure out you probably never should have left. But there is no time for regrets and what ifs. What you did, you did. And that's in the past. And now it's time to focus on the future. All I'm trying to say here is it actually felt so fucking magical, you know, to do that comeback. Now it's a more mature version of yourself, the more experienced version of yourself. But once again, feeling the kind of a magic and asking yourself, why the hell did we stop doing this in the first place? Now, actually, I tend to re remember these kind of things, so I don't really have to second guess myself for doing that. But I'm saying 
I now have the first hand experience of doing a comeback. Doing a gig that felt so good, it just gave me more hunger to do even more. And I think the, that's the thing with the whole band now. Now, of course, when the gig was over, some people started asking, so this was kind of like, first, like one thing go. Like, first you do it, and then you just wrap it up, and that's it. But I said, nope. We're actually doing new songs because now we have this good lineup. We have very, very much of that focus I was speaking of to do even more, more gigs, more new songs. And someday when we have enough good material to actually release something new. So let this be one of those uh, experiences that I get to, get to share with you. You know, you do something that you kind of... Uh, are not sure whether it or not it makes sense. Should we do this comeback? And if we do, should we just vanish again? Or should or could you even find that magical moment, the thing, the very essence of things which actually makes playing in a band so goddamn enjoyable? Now when we go to rehearsal room, we're full of energy doing those new songs, going through new riffs and ideas, whether it's keyboard parts, whether it's, you know, setting the vocals, or writing down lyrics. And I even feel that writing, writing new lyrics has never been as easy as it is now. Even though sometimes you really, you know, face the wall and figure out, okay, this guy's kind of a writer's block. But now it think, seems like everything is falling in place. You know, just you kind of find these building blocks. One guy brings certain riffs, the other guy might be not something else. And things seem to click. We seem to have this great mutual understanding. And playing that show, I think it made a big change now obviously we're not dreaming of becoming rock stars that's something i think none of us would actually never had in their minds so it's not like we want to embark on this great uh, world tour or anything like that but we want to do those kicks we want to do those new songs and we want to record a new album eventually however long it might take i don't know but it feels good, and I strongly recommend now people giving some ideas, some hobbies or lifestyle choices, giving another chance. Maybe things, certain things, certainly, didn't feel right at the time. Maybe because you were too young, maybe because you were playing with the wrong kind of a line, a wrong choosing of friends or whatever. And sometimes the comeback made, could make even more sense than the original thing. When you can't really do a comeback if you didn't have the original thing in the first place. So let, it be, let this be a learning experience for me and people like me who kind of uh, drifted away from one cool thing only to figure out later no one should have never drifted away from it. But things go as they go and sometimes you're not into control of it. So I want to now share you with you both the Nightside album which somebody uploaded to YouTube and the gig, which was also uploaded to YouTube with by one of the people in the audience. And uh, while not the uh, quality might not be the best out there, that's kind of a given. I hope you will give it a chance and figure out what Nightside is all about, both as an album and on stage. And uh, should you feel Nightside should be playing a gig somewhere near you, well, we're definitely going to need your help to do that. And uh, should you need to com comment some of the stuff, feel free. Feel free to be as critical as you want to. And if you need to stay in touch with me, you will find my information, email and all that stuff on YouTube's website with the information tab. And uh, that's it pretty much. If you need to ask me something or comment about this lives and albums or just this video, Feel free to do it. Thanks for taking your time with me. This is Rauda. This is Cherry. See you soon with more videos coming your way.